Woodhenge is a sustainable community, an intentional community. You can give it a whole lot of titles, but it is where people live and where we like to build things together, grow things together. We're not a commune, although we've been accused of that. We're not a cult, we've been accused of that. It's just a matter of, I like to build things, including houses, and show people how to live without a mortgage, how to live without the power company, how to live without a grocery store. If you take from a system, and any system, uh, a food system, an energy system, you need to put back into that system as much as you've taken out. Otherwise, it's like a bank account that you keep taking money down until you go bankrupt. You can view me as either a cheapskate or a granola-hugging tree eater. Um, it really doesn't matter. The net result is the same. But my wife and I have both studied how the world lives in many different cultures and discovered that the culture we're in is incredibly wasteful. More than half the food that is produced is wasted. More than half the energy produced by power companies is wasted. And things like that bothered us. Um, we're both retired teachers, but as teachers, we viewed this as part of our secondary and tertiary goals as teaching, to teach the kids to look around them and stop wasting things. Because, you know, I don't view sustainability in terms of years or decades, but millennia. What are we leaving for the people a thousand years from now? You know, what harm are we causing to the environment that's going to cause our kids, our grandkids, our great grandkids to suffer? Concerns about the environment and wasteful use of energy, coupled with a desire to recycle materials destined for landfills, caused Jim and his wife to rethink how they wanted to live. After purchasing property near Adams Center, New York, Woodhenge was born. Jim and his wife decided they wanted to build a house with minimal energy consumption, off the grid, and with recycled or repurposed materials, while still living comfortably with amenities such as lights, internet, and television. The house is a post and beam construction. We used beams from the Watertown Bowling Alley when they were tearing it down. We purchased 10 of their 100 foot long trusses. And so I built the frame first out of those beams, and then the cordwood walls, it's also called stack wall construction, went in later. Uh, we harvested 70 face cords of red pine from a local forest that had been stripped during the ice storms of the 90s. Uh, the mortar I experimented in school and we came up with papercrete. Papercrete is a mixture of paper pulp and cement products, so it's both insulative and relatively fireproof. You can take a torch against it. The windows were recycled at a various local businesses. The doors were built by me or my students. It's on a crawl space, so I could get underneath to do the wiring and plumbing. Uh, the house has a grass roof, and you'll notice if we get rain today and you come back, it'll be 10 degrees cooler because the moisture evaporating off of the earth roof will cool the house down by about 10 degrees. All but one of the buildings on this property are powered by the sun, and the energy is stored in batteries. These panels happen to be on a barter that I got. Uh, I traded batteries that I was given out of a Fort Drum junk pile the, uh, for a guy who took these panels off his dad's house. They're, these are kind of historic panels in that they went up on a house in the 19, late 1970s when the OPEC oil embargo was around. And this guy's dad wanted to defeat it and then he thought they were no good. We found out that the panels don't degrade over time as they predicted. These are producing easily 90% of their original output. A large part of Jim's sustainable living plan is self-reliance, with a goal to produce most, if not all, of their own food. Thus, Woodhenge contains a large garden and an orchard with a variety of different trees. We like to grow a lot of our own food, um, and we've discovered that over the years, you determine what to plant based on what grew well. So every area has its own microclimate. We happen to be growing a lot of garlic uh, in the garden, but this is uh, music, uh, German hardneck garlic. But we grow onions, beans, peas, all kinds of squashes, pumpkins, corn, beets, rutabagas, etc. And the idea is you either root cellar them, dehydrate them, pressure can them, uh, steam juice them, or water bath can them. Or I have friends with uh, freeze dryers and we freeze dry them. There's a variety of apple trees. There's probably 40 different kinds of apple trees here and I tried to plant two of each. So they'll come ripe at different times and we try to pick them when they're in season. 
Some are good for pies, some are good for eating raw, some are good for applesauce, some are good for cider. We have found for cider that the best cider is a mixture of every kind of apple you can get. It gives the best flavor. This is one of our plum trees. We have six different varieties and this particular year was a great year for plums. Uh, you can see by the weight on the tree and the fact that we have several broken branches that we probably should have pruned a little bit more this uh, spring. But I'm happy to see it. These will come in and either be dried, juiced, or uh, turned into jam. Not a good one. Jim offers a range of workshops and seminars on a variety of sustainable and self-reliance topics such as canning and preserving food, eating efficiently with wood, building alternative living structures, and more. He shares tips and techniques through his book. My book is called The High Art and Subtle Science of Scrounging, and it deals with finding things for free or near free that would benefit you. Food, clothing, cars, houses, land, uh, entertainment, travel, fuel, they're all covered in there on how to find them for free or near free. Uh, sometimes people will even pay you to take the stuff away and thank you for taking it away. Jim's book is available by contacting him through his Facebook page.